So let's go ahead and bring in Laura Kelly, a foreign policy reporter with The Hill. So, Laura, U.S.-China relationships have been pretty tense over the past couple of years. So where do we go from here in terms of trying to mend a relationship between the two countries? Yes, well, this incident is definitely a setback in the U.S. and China trying to move forward on repairing a lot of communication that has been severed over the past couple of months, um, in particular with the postponement of Secretary Blinken's trip to China. That was meant to address reestablishing communication channels that the Chinese had severed after then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi traveled to Taiwan, which for um, the Chinese government in Beijing was a huge provocation for them. And so they cut off communication with the U.S. over talks on climate change and uh, over very sensitive military to military communications. But the Biden administration is trying to emphasize that they are still open to talking with the Chinese. They still have uh, ways to communicate with the Chinese um, and are looking to reschedule Secretary Blinken's visit so that they can address a lot of the larger issues in the U.S. and China relationship, but that this balloon incident has really uh, put a... Uh, throw a wrench in the plans. You know, to your point, China says that, again, the U.S. overreacted when we shot down this balloon. So are there fears of any sort of retaliation on China's end? And what could that potentially look like? I think we're going to have to wait and see what happens over the next couple of days. Um, National Security Spokesperson John Kirby has said there's no reason that these tensions should devolve into conflict. Um, the U.S. is saying that they are maintaining talks with China about this incident, but they do uh, they do issue strong opposition to the fact that a uh, Chinese balloon, what they say, what the U.S. government says, a surveillance balloon, a spying balloon, um, has has gone over into uh, U.S. sovereign territory. And um, the Biden administration says they were completely within their right to shoot it down because it was within U.S. airspace and U.S. territory, um, even as the Chinese say that um, there was no reason to shoot down the balloon. And if you Google this Chinese air uh, spy balloon incident, uh, you hear the word and you see the word Cold War kind of getting thrown around. And there are some adults who weren't even alive during uh, the first Cold War with Russia. So what potentially would that look like between China and the U.S.? One of the things that people, former diplomats, um, international relations experts stress are um, the uh, the most important thing is to is to maintain communication. And they say that even during the most tense points uh, during the Cold War between the U.S. and Russia, that there were still ways to communicate. And you see U.S. officials and um, I would say probably on the Chinese side also saying that um, they're they're still talking. So I, I think as long as that is happening. Um, there's always the, the potential for resolution. Laura Kelly from The Hill, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.